All right, here we are. Question number six, the last of its kind. We've been answering these FRQ questions today. 2024 FRQ, why do I keep going back up here to see the title? I don't know, it just seems like the right, the right thing to do. So here we are, we've done one, two, three, four, five, and you've probably watched those videos already. Maybe just skip to six, who knows? Maybe this was the one that you needed to see. This one definitely was a little strange. Let's look at it. A uh, scientist can quantify the rate of translation as ribosomes move along an mRNA from one code on to the next. Using a procedure called ribosome profiling, scientists measured how long a ribosome remains stationary at each codon of the messenger RNA. They determined the average translation rate across all codons is 5.2 amino acids per second, but that the average translation rate for specific codons in a messenger RNA may vary widely. These variations in translation rates are thought to facilitate correct folding of a protein um, that's being produced. Hmm. The rate at which three different codons were translated was measured 100 in 100 different messenger RNAs. The scientists determined the distribution rate, the number of times the rate was recorded for each of the three codons, GAC, AUU, and UGG. Ugh. All right, so let's look at these graphs. Interesting looking graphs. This is the number of times, number of times rate was recorded, okay? So basically the number of times that it, that it occurred, this is the translation rate uh, so this is like a histo histogram, right? So it's a uh, it's counting a quantity of a particular um, value. And all right, so we got that, we got that, we got that. Good, good. Okay. Um, using the data in Figure One, identify the rate that was recorded for the greatest number of times of the GAC codon. Well, wow, this is simple. All right, so here it is. GAC 150 was recorded 20 times. Move it on. I I don't know what those. Uh, maybe I just maybe it's completely wrong. Maybe it was so simple I missed it. Uh, using data in Figure One graphs B and C, describe the variation translation rate of AUU compared with that of UGG. So let's look at it. Now, when I first read this question, um, when I first read this question, I definitely thought about it backwards, and so. This is interesting. Hopefully, you all didn't do the same thing that I did. Um, because this is in milliseconds, right? And so, the faster times are going to be down here. The slower times are going to be here. And so, AUU is faster than UGG. Why? Because most of the times that the rate was recorded, it was really fast. 100 to 150 milliseconds. Whereas uh, the rate for UGG was, you know, anywhere from 150 to 650. And so um, the way that I would answer that question is I would say that AUU tends to have a faster rate, whereas UGG uh, tends to have a, a slower or even a non-specific rate would work because there's you know it doesn't seem to be one thing whereas AUU is fairly much 100 150 in there definitely um, the I felt like last year question six also had a graph that you had to read backwards read upside down so um, yeah interesting uh, part C uh, scientists hypothesize that tRNA molecules that bind to UGG are available in lower abundance than tRNA and AUU. Support the scientist hypothesis using the data in figure one. Okay. So UGG uh, is slower. Why is it slower? Because there's fewer of these um, tRNAs, right? It's like, um, it's like if you were trying to find something that there was only like four of versus something that there were 200 of, which one are you gonna find the fastest? over and over more times than not you're going to find the one that's the 200 right there's there's more prevalence and so um that's my answer it takes longer to translate them because it just takes longer for one of those trnas to to be there it sounds pretty like non-technical 
but um, that's as good a way to describe it as any. All right, part D. Amino acids can be encoded by multiple codons. In many organisms, certain codons for the same amino acid occur more frequently in a messenger RNA than, other, than do other codons. Based on the data provided, explain why the use of one codon over another for the same amino acid might result in increased levels of protein production. Um, it's very similar, right? It's because of the frequency of tRNAs. Some tRNAs are going to be more abundant in the cell, and so the it's going to increase fitness in order to have certain codons over other codons because the prevalence of tRNAs is going to be more abundant in in some codons than in other codons. It's going to increase rate of. I know this is really small, but over the course of lots of time, it's going to really change the amount of proteins that are being made. That was an interesting question. Uh, it was really good. So, a couple. Th we've already started seeing some comments as I've been like making these videos and kind of publishing them as soon as I get them made. Um, don't worry. Don't freak out. I mean, this is. These are like four points a piece, and you get a couple points along the way for each question. You get four, five, six points on the first two questions. You're going to turn out all right. It's okay if you miss just one or two here and there. Uh, don't, don't, don't fret. And people are already talking about how they're, they're cooked and all these different things. Ah, you're probably just fine. So uh, relax. Scores will be out in a couple months. Um, in the meantime, like this video, subscribe, and comment down below. Tell me how you think you did on this question. Tell me how you think you did on the exam as a whole, even the multiple choice. I haven't heard much about that. We'll be talking to you later.